Up with Krim begins now. Right now on Up with Krim, a massive manhunt is over in the Perry District. Police are asking people living near Liberty Park, or they were asking people living in Liberty Park to stay indoors this morning. But we've got the latest on the search. And today, Washington will evaluate county metrics to determine who will stay in phase three and who will go back to phase two. So now communities will not have to go back unless they quote fail two of those instead of one of those things. We'll walk you through the governor's new criteria and where county numbers are as of this morning. And the Washington phase finder tool is making it easier for you to find a vaccine. It even sends you texts when a vaccine is nearby. We'll walk you through a website in just a few minutes right here on Up With Krem. And it's a chilly start to the day. This morning, we're talking warm in temperatures and another round of wind hitting the inland northwest. Well, as we mentioned, we're tracking breaking news this morning as a massive overnight manhunt in Spokane is now over. Thank you for watching Up With Cram with us this morning. I'm Joshua Robinson. And I'm Dana Marie McNichol. Now, police have had areas near Liberty Park blocked off for hours, but again, that's now open. Officers just updated us in the last 15 minutes. Our Brandon G. Jones is there with the latest. Okay, hey, so right now I'm actually standing in a Perry District neighborhood that was completely shut down this morning during the massive manhunt that took place. I just had an opportunity to speak with neighbors here in the area. So we have a lady right now joining us. Her name is Melody. She's a neighbor here. She says it's usually pretty quiet. So Melody, you were telling us uh, about what was going on. You said you didn't see what was happening, but you could just hear the sounds and all of the chaos taking place. So. Yeah, about three o'clock this morning, you could hear helicopters and a bunch of traffic. And then we got a message on our telephone saying, hey, stay inside. We have a armed suspect in your neighborhood. Um, keep inside and stay low. And, that, you know, I've been awake since about that time trying to figure out what was going on. Kind of scared that yeah. somebody was going to break into the house yeah. or yeah, and so what you were telling me, you saw that notification, and it's normally a pretty quiet area. Oh yeah, of the it's town. a really quiet neighborhood. At, um, after dark, and hardly any traffic. Nobody walks up and down the streets. There's nothing going on in the area at all. Real quiet. Yeah, so you're basically just trying to do your best to stay away from the whole situation, right? And you said you were locking your doors, just trying to keep an eye out for what was going on, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and then my kids go to work and come home early in the mornings, and I was kind of worried about them leaving the house and coming in this morning. Yeah, and you were saying they were able to get out and, you know, do what they had to do, though, yeah. right? Okay. Well, I appreciate you, Melanie, just for taking some time to, you know, talk to us about the situation. But, yeah, Joshua, Dana Marie, it really was just quite a chaotic situation. Probably one of the largest police perimeters I've seen set up here in Spokane in my time living here. But the situation is no longer a threat to the public. They have located the man who was found deceased, and they're investigating it as a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Joshua, Dana Marie. Thank you for keeping us updated, Brandon, and that live interview. Now we're going to change gears to a developing story we've been covering since last night. A Spokane woman was found dead and a child is severely injured. Yeah, police say they found a semi-conscious man in a closed garage on Sunday with a car running. That man is now in custody. Police got a call from a friend of the victim. She could hear the car running but couldn't get inside the house. That house was located at North Adams Street and Queens. The woman was found dead with serious traumatic injuries. And a five-year-old child was also found alive but with life-threatening injuries. The child was brought to a nearby hospital and underwent surgery, but their status is not known as of this morning. We will continue to keep you updated right here on Up With Krem as we learn new information, or you can keep an eye on krem.com. Well, it is a chilly start to the day, but now that the sun is up, things are warming up and warming up rather quick. It feels nice and warm in the sun. A big change from where we were earlier, despite that temperature not going anywhere. We're still sitting comfortably at 28 degrees here in Spokane and across the inland northwest. It's temperatures in the 20s, but on the rise up to 28 now in Coeur d'Alene, 27 in Sandpoint, 29 in Moses Lake and back up in the low 30s in Wenatchee. Temperatures are on the rise now that the sun's up, but throughout the day, Expect wind to start to pick up out of the north and northeast, gusting to near 20 miles per hour later on this afternoon. Until then, it's pretty clear overhead. 
Nothing but sunshine in the forecast through the middle part of the day. Then we'll see some isolated showers develop. Most of those stay really far off to the north. I don't think we see any action down here in Spokane or over in Coeur d'Alene. But what we will wind up seeing is a little more cloud cover build in through the second half of the day. Tomorrow, sun returns, but the wind really picks up across the region. So for today, just know that temps are on the rise. By noon, we're up near 50 degrees and this afternoon. Temperatures will stay in the mid to low 50s despite some of that cloud cover and the wind. Tomorrow, a lot more wind and I'll walk you through that coming up in the full forecast. Here at 705 this morning, today is decision day when counties across the state will learn if they have to increase their coronavirus restrictions. Take a look at this map. You can see all of the counties that are shaded in blue are currently failing to meet at least one of the state's reopening metrics. That includes most of eastern Washington counties. The, now those shaded in gray are meeting state metrics, including Spokane and Lincoln counties. Under the governor's new guidelines, counties that are over the set number of coronavirus cases and hospitalizations allowed for their population will have to move backward. Right now, all counties in Washington are under phase three, which allows for 50% capacity inside most businesses. Moving back to phase two would mean 25% capacity only. Looking ahead, everyone 16 years and older in our state will soon be eligible to receive their COVID-19 vaccine starting Thursday. That's more than 6 million people. While one in five people are fully vaccinated already, it could take a little time to score your appointment. I think people will have to be patient in looking for a vaccine, um, but we have a lot of vaccine providers and they're ready to go. What, they, what we need is the supply. So um, it may take a few weeks for people to get an appointment, but they'll get one. Now there are a variety of places offering a coronavirus vaccine, including CVS, MultiCare, and Providence. All right. Coming up after the break, we're taking you outside again and talking about the changing weather this week. We'll see temperatures on the rise, but that comes with a little bit of wind tomorrow. And Disneyland is opening its doors once again, but online claims are spreading some misinformation. So is there a ban on screaming on rides? After the break, we'll verify.